and greetings everyone or seasons greetings even this is Jester and today we will be reviewing the Ryzen Luxury Cruiser and she is a rather odd ship she actually reminds me of that cruiser off <coughs> the fifth element um, yeah she's different um, we won't be going to the bridge on this one because it doesn't have its own bridge um, I've had to purchase the, the bridge for it so I didn't feel it would be any point going looking at it but as you can see from the outside she has some very interesting design features in fact here you get some sails coming out I mean why you would have sails on a spaceship is beyond me really but um, anyway mine is not to reason why I got this ship from um, a Phoenix lockbox uh, so, well it was a, an ultra rare Phoenix token actually not a lockbox an ultra rare Phoenix token and it's a quirky ship which is the reason why I picked it for um, yes it does have some rather quirky features to it doesn't it right well without further ado let's have a look at the build so this is a 4-4 build I'm running four phases at the front and four phases at the back. Actually, three phases with an Omni. Three pulse phases, Mark 15. And at the front, I'm running a quantum phase beam, which is part of the three piece set. That's at level 14, uh, very rare. And that's part of the set of the quantum phase torpedo and part of the quantum phase converter. So that, there's the three piece set there. Uh, this is the agony phaser beam and I'm also running a prolonged engagement phaser now this is could be part of a, a set but I've chosen just to keep this uh, particular phaser on its own I'm running the two piece Nukara set the deflector and the impulse engines and I'm also running the elite fleet plasma integrated warp core and that's at Mark 12. The shields, I'm running the Mako Resistant Shield Array, Mark 15. In my device slots, I'm running the Beacon of KLS, Nimbus Pirate, Red Matter Capacitor, and the Shield Battery. The engineering consoles. This console that comes with the ship is the Soliton Wave Generator. What does it do? I don't know. Let's have a read. 150.7 radiation damage every 5 seconds, 50% shield penetration. Uh, engine power setting, uh, okay. Let's have a look at the more details. Rise and Luxury Cruisers can be equipped with a soliton wave generator. This allows the ship to generate a powerful but stable soliton wave that will draw nearby enemy ships towards the cruiser and deal minor radiation damage. During this time, the soliton wave generator is building up a powerful charge that is released after a short time. This release Soliton Wave will damage nearby foes and will briefly knock their engines offline. This console mod can only be equipped on Ryzen Starships but can be fit on any console slot. You may only equip one of these, yeah so you can only have one on each ship. Uh, right okay. Right, right, okay, right. Um, so, as one of my standard builds, I'm also running a bioneural infusion circuits. Uh, that is giving me a 23.8 critical severity. I'm running the console universal simulated mod module, 1.1 critical chance, 10.9 critical severity, plus 5 to weapons power, and plus 6 starship damage control. 27.2 27 
Starship Control Expertise. I'm running the Zero Point Energy Conduit and that uh, for no other reason other than it gives me a 2.1 critical chance. Um, down to the science consoles I'm running the Domino which is giving me a 15% phaser boost and a 20% accuracy rating. Uh, the plasmonic leech which I'm using on most of my builds now I'll, I'm not really um, intrigued with this um, since they nerfed it down since cryptic nerfed it so yeah I may review this particular console in future builds uh, moving on to tactical consoles I'm running two vulnerable vulnerability exploiters uh, and that's given me a 39.4% phaser damage and a 9.8 critical severity on both. I'm also running a vulnerable vulnerab can't say it, can I? Vulnerability locator, which is giving me a 39.4 phaser damage and a 2% critical chance. The statistics on this ship: the hull is 66,194, which is quite it is quite squishy really um, considering um, I wonder if I can put a trellium D plating on here, have we got any? I do have trellium D, I think what we'll do is if I move that down there and then swap that out for the trellium D plating Okay, so I've taken off the leech and put trellium D plating, which has boosted my uh, hull um, and resist, sorry, considerably. If we take it off, you can see what I mean. Whoops. I'll take that off. And as with all. Oh, that's because I've taken the wrong one off, you put in. Right, there you go. So it all drops down, look, 22, 23. If I put the trellium D plating back on, it goes up to 32. Uh, shields at 16%. I can live with that. Um, critical chance is 19.2%. Critical severity, 153.9. Um, yeah, that's I quite like that, although I do like the critical chance to be above 20%. Um, I'm wondering if I... I don't know how I can... Yeah, I don't know how what I can use to boost that. Um, I could try that, see what that does. There you go. So we've got a 15% phase of damage, which is more or less the same as what I had with the domino, but I've actually moved the critical chance to 20.7, which is, yeah, I, I, I quite like that. So I'll go with that. So there we go. Uh, that's the build. So what we'll do, I will meet you in the Japori sector, and we'll see what she can do. See you in a minute. So here we are in the Jupori sector. So let's put her to the test. Well, straight away I, I've noticed that the turn rate's quite good. So I'm impressed with that. Yes, she seems to uh, handle herself pretty well. Yep, the turn rate's uh, quite surprising, really. It's um, it it feels like uh, an escort, maybe not as fast. Uh, this hull's. I've noticed the hull sort of lets us down a little bit. I mean, that was that. Look at that hit. That was a sixteen thousand damage hit. That um, 
That was quite impressive, actually. That was a 14,000. We even hit a, an 18,000 then, and a 22,000 there. So that is very, very good. I'm impressed with that. I did a run with this ship yesterday, and it blew up a few times. Um, and I wasn't entirely impressed with it, but today, after a few little tweaks... Um, I seem to have improved uh, quite a lot. Turn off the hood and then you can get a good idea of what we're looking at. Well, I take it back. This ship is great fun to use, actually. She may not be the best looking ship. Um, but she is great fun. Let's use the quantum destabilizing beam and see how that works. And that works very well. Yeah, those warp core breaches cost us a little bit there in the hull, but... Well, I have to say, I am impressed with that run. Um, I did the same run yesterday and didn't fare half as well. Very impressed with this. Um, yes, not the best looking ship, I admit, but nonetheless, she performed adequately. So if you do happen to get your hands on one of these, um, you can have some great fun with them. I've just had real good fun with them. I'll, I'll probably be using this again, even though I wasn't a, a fan of it when I first started, but um, it will grow on me. So, this is the Ryzen Luxury Cruiser, and you can obtain this through the Phoenix lockboxes. Um, if you get yourself an ultra rare or an epic token I think it's I think it's an ultra rare actually for this one uh, I was lucky enough to get an ultra rare and an epic a couple of months ago which is very rare actually because I haven't had one of those since the game started so I got one of each so probably won't get another one for another five years so I hope you've enjoyed this review if you've enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe to catch further reviews. And if I don't catch you before Christmas, I hope everyone has a happy Christmas. And I shall see you shortly. So this is Jester, signing off.